Good afternoon, my chemistry minions. Nuclear unit 12 and our very last unit of the year today, lecture one. We are going to kind of get a feel for what nuclear chemistry is and what it's all about. Okay. Um, when we are done with today, we will be able to determine if a nucleus of an element is stable or unstable. Um, we will compare artificial and natural transmutation reactions. We will begin to understand the basic notation of nucleotides and nu basic nuclear reactions. Okay. When we started the year, we dealt with protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we added in isotopes. So remember, um, same number of protons, different mass. That's what an isotope is. And so we'll just start that review now. So we're going to get back into the nucleus, except for this time with nuclear, we're going to deal with what happens when we do move these protons and neutrons around and kind of break those laws of physics. And we've create, been able to create a lot of cool experiments and reactions over time. Now, I'll start with this first piece that if you're listening to me and not bumping, you will hear. The notes are already pre-filled in for you this time. I'm going to go ahead and highlight what you should be getting and what you would normally be writing. And I would like you to do the same. I would like you to either highlight or re-underline each of these words so that I know that you are paying attention. And any other annotations you need to do to get full credit, like when I do the examples on the board, you'll still need to do those, okay? So nuclear chemistry, okay, it's caused by a change in the nucleus of an atom to become another element. Remember, the elements are defined by the number of protons that are there. So if I add a proton, <clears throat> I've changed the element effectively, okay? Stability. Is it stable? Large atoms with an atomic number greater than 83 are naturally radioactive be due to the unstable nucleus. There's just too many big pluses in there. And remember, pluses are going to repel with another plus. So I get up to about 83. That's about as many as they can handle. Okay. Small atoms, on the other hand, are stable and not natu naturally radioactive because they have less than 83. Um, the exception to the small atom rule, when an atom's mass is not its typical mass. Um, is an isotope of the mass in the periodic table. Carbon-13 and carbon-14 are prime examples. They are radioactive. Carbon-14 something we talk about all the time with um, dating. We can figure out the amount of carbon-14 left. And we knew how much carbon-14 is generally in any living life form. And then we can figure out how many years it's been since it died. <clears throat> Radioisotope is an isotope of any element, oh wait, I lost my highlighter, that is unstable and therefore radioactive. Let me get my highlighter back. I haven't played with the highlighter much before, so I see if I use a pen now, I lose my highlighter. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm going to lose my highlighter again. Watch this. All right, so element CA nuclear symbol I have a total mass of 37 with 20 protons the periodic table mass we have to look this up in the periodic table is remember the periodic table we haven't used it really in a long time at least not a ton the mass is of calcium in the periodic table is 40 so is it stable or unstable it is unstable because it's different. Okay. Let's do oxygen 14. If I look at the periodic table, my, my periodic table mass is 16. Here it's 14, so this is unstable. Where the one right above it, oxygen 16, supposed to be 16, so this one is stable. Looks like we have two you do's. Basically, is it on the reference table the right way or not? If it's on the periodic table the way it's there, it is stable. So a absence to a substance with an unstable nucleus, it will naturally or spontaneously, remember without any added energy, decay. 
to, to form a more stable substance or element. Remember, everything in, in nature wants to be stable. Okay. Transmutation. The changing of a nucleus to one element or nucleus of one element into the nucleus of another element by gaining or losing nucleons always decays into a more stable element. Everything is going to become more stable. That's the idea. So let's look at natural. This ha happens with unstable atoms greater than 83. Okay. I see. This is what's nice about this. This is just a math game, right? I'm going to look at it this way. I have uranium with 92 protons and a mass of 238. Well, it says it's going to decay or go into helium with a mass of 2, so or proton, atomic number of 2. So with the atomic number of whatever else is left, 2 plus what is 92? 90. Okay. 4 plus what is 238? 234 is the mass, the total mass. And then this 90, of course, is going to tell me what my new element is. So I go to the periodic table. I find who has 90 protons? TH. Thallium, I believe. Okay. Now, this particular form of decay is called alpha decay. There's also beta decay, positron emission. We're going to learn about those three coming up. Okay. Um, in the sun, we do fission, fusion. We do fusion in the sun, and then there's also electron capture. Those are the ways that we do natural transmutation. So now we need to do induced or artificial. This occurs with stable atoms that need some kind of high energy particles to begin the reaction. So here, this nitrogen with seven. It's not over 82, it was, right? So it's it's stable, okay? I'm going to bombard it with the helium, okay? So here, notice here's where my arrow is. Now it's 7 plus 2 is 9. 14 plus 4 is 18. Look on my periodic table for 9 protons, and I get fluorine, okay? So I do this... I do this artificial by bombarding the nucleus and then fusion or fission that humans do. So I can do fusion. I can do fission. Um, fission is splitting. Fusion is combining. And fusion sounds a lot like fusing. Um, just so happens this happens naturally in the sun. Fission is, I think, what we do at the nuclear reactors when I split an atom or I ram that add them into a wall and I get it going fast enough I can break it. it does happen. So here are the different types of radiation. This is in table O in our reference tables. Alpha particle has this symbol. I draw it with a little bit more of a pronounced tail than what's on the page. It is naturally occurring elements notation. Let's look up table O. on the top of page 7, right above the organic stuff we were just doing. Alpha particle is known as 4HE with a 2 or 4 with that alpha symbol and a 2. That's an alpha particle. Okay, Its mass is going to be 4. It says hazard. It, there is not a tough hazard or a big hazard with this. As a matter of fact, skin or even a piece of paper is enough to stop it from getting into you. Okay, so we can stop alpha particles pretty easily. Beta particle particles, again, now if we're going to, each one of these is going to get worse and worse <clears throat> as far as dangerousness, okay? Uh, the atomic nucleus of most radioisotopes, I produce a beta molecule. A beta molecule symbol is a little e with an O and a negative one. Or you're going to get this funny B that's there with the negative with that little tail. And it's going to be a negative one and a zero. Okay. Sometimes I will see the symbol is just this with the negative to show me denounce that negative one. Okay. Its mass is zero. 
Um, da it's dangerous internally and externally, but it's weak enough that I can stop it with tinfoil or cardboard. Okay, it doesn't have any mass. It makes it smaller. I can get through more things. Notice the positron has the plus sign. Okay, it comes from radioactive isotopes. Positron's got the E with a zero or a plus and a plus one on the bottom, or it's got that B with the tail with a plus one and a zero. Notice that it's the plus one and the minus one that's different. Okay, sometimes we will see its symbol is just that, that little B with the plus. Its mass, again, is zero. It's dangerous internally and externally. Cardboard and tinfoil can stop it because a positron is basically just like a beta particle, except for it's positive. And now we get to the to the granddaddy of them all, the gamma ray. Um, nearly all nuclear reactions produce gamma radiation. This is the thing that that Geiger counter is looking for. It's got this silly little Y thing with a zero and a zero. Okay, gamma radiation is basically just a wave. It is super very dangerous and highly penetrating. You need that lead shield or concrete and a, a lot of concrete to keep it from getting through. This has got the most energy, the most dangerous. Remember, radiation can damage our cells and cause um, abnormalities and cancer. Here's a picture of table O. And what you're going to be using to get these symbols, and it's pretty straightforward as far as the notation goes. Okay. Here's what's going to happen when we put the radiation through the plate because the positive charge is going to go to the negative, the negative charge is going to go to the positive, and the neutral is going to go straight through. Okay. And that's it. We've kind of introduced ourselves to nuclear chemistry and what it's all about. We can determine based on just how many protons are in a nucleus if it is stable or not. We can compare artificial and natural transmutation now and begin to understand the basics of our nutation. There is a prep for number one for nuclear. There's You can do practice pages two and three. And we are right onto this unit and finishing up the year. I'll see you guys tomorrow in class. <laughs>